hey, 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 all right, so, second part, uh, yeah, so, like I said, we could add a little girl running in this time, and once we get that, uh, fixed all in, we can easily, uh, get a nice, uh, that's what I'm looking for, um, like some nice clothes on her, you know what I'm saying? We could go with a soccer uniform. Something like this. Any second. Okay, there we go. Right there. Got a little girl. She's like, oh, I'm about to kick the ball. Bam. And she is about to kick that wonderful ball. But we already did that part. So let's just finish up her running in and taking the ball by storm. Now, uh, unfortunately, my video, uh, what's what I'm looking for? My video player is not working right. It's not playing movies correctly. Uh, and I wasn't able to get that reference for it. But I would drop that YouTube video in the link just so uh, you can have it and observe it of your own free will. And I'm talking about, just a quick reminder, of the slow motion soccer. The slow motion soccer player kick. It's a wonderful thing just to take a look at and study and all that good stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, when you get a chance, and once again, it's basically running in from that to which one of you guys this guy right here so at this point uh the soccer player should be reaching this leg and about to come into the picture like this and that is right so instead of doing this they kicked so we're going to be mimicking this and we're going to stop right right here and we're going to go into that nice kick that we previously planned out so once again that means leg down arm ready for that motion, that momentum, and all of that good jazzy jazz. So, uh, and where's that one? So, it's a reminder, the rev up that they could have. As if we take it to the extreme, and where's the other one? It should be this one. Hold on. Something happened. And I am double checking what just happened on this part. And I apologize, my computer crashed. Give me a second. Three, two, one. All right, we are back at it again. I feel a lot better. I apologize for that. It did take me a while. Um, I was not able to upload it to yesterday. And I am just getting started on this one right now. So as you can see, we left off exactly how it is. She's kicking the ball. And if I push the play button, she's going to be shooting that little bad boy out into space. <clears throat> Look at that. Oh, bam. Now, to finish it all off, we could have her start off with a nice, healthy run. So I'm going to go over here, let's see, not over here, but over here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <clears throat> uh, apologize for that. Let's see, so, bam, not the right picture. Let's see, I need something else. Which one was it? It was, it wasn't, yeah, there we go. It was run. Actually, no, I was looking for a little kid, but this is perfect. So, as we can see in one and two, we see a little bit of a, of a running start. Like, you see the legs are extended out a lot longer than they were for, uh, for the compression. So, let's see. So, right here, we have four as compressed and five as compressed but you see on number two the leg is a lot longer and i'm looking at the dark leg right here so the one that's furthest away from us that's shadowed up now let me find that uh uh let's see the run cycle which one was it it wasn't that one i think it was this guy all right so 
as we can see here, this is the more exaggerated version of it, where you see the character coming in, squash, you get that squash right around here, and then he's starting to stretch himself out. He keeps that stretch up until he makes contact, and that's when he starts to come back to normal, and then he squashes and then stretches again. And this is the cycle that we continue on when we just keep running like the running animals that we are. So... <clears throat> And once again, I got the ball on key points where it's staying still and where it is about to be sent off into space. So, what I'm going to do, we could keep the animation as it is right now. So, I'm going to keep new frame. And it made another one. What it did was just copy the first one and literally just pushed it down the line. So, now number two is the one that we just made. So, I'm going to grab number two and I'm going to move him all the way to the to the left all right so bam we got our number two on our left which is now number one and we got the previous one right there so we got our little starting point and got our little girl right here so we're gonna finish it all off with a nice little run that just transitions into the the kick really, really, <clears throat> I apologize for that, uh, expediently. My computer's acting a little bit slow. And once again, the program does kind of have, uh, allow for a delay on my, uh, on my end. Reason being, the recording is, uh, the recording software takes up a lot of information, at least for my little laptop, so... If it lags, once again, I apologize, but we shouldn't get too much of that. All right, so, <clears throat> and I, I feel better, but now my throat is just gone. So I'm gonna put that K right there as a keyframe. I'm gonna turn this little bad boy down, and I'm gonna click on Prograde Frame 1, and I'm gonna just check that off. Now I am going to, <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to uh, add the foot running in. And once again, we're copying this guy. So see the furthest leg away from us? This guy right here and this guy right here. So we're going to be coming in from this end. So this right here is where we are at in the animation. So number six is where we are about to kick the ball once again. So number five, four, three, two, one is what we're gonna basically get into. So go back to this guy. So once again, that means leg is, the foot is gonna be like right around here. Once again, we're trying to keep the proportions just a little bit. And I think I showed you the cheat code if you need to make sure your proportions are, are correct. So if you could just draw over the one that we previously drew. Hit the L button. So get the lasso tool, go around it really fast. Hit the V button. And that is going to allow us to move anything that we have marqueed or masked off. So as you see, mask it off, move it up here. Because I know the leg is going to be stretched out. And then click M just to click off of it. See our dat. I'm gonna hit B real quick as well. So just to give you a little brief uh, briefing on what I'm doing right here. So take that off. And I'm gonna take that leg and I'm gonna just the shin part of the leg. I'm just gonna take that and uh, make that lasso it. Control T. And then spin that little bad boy around. And then we could just do a little bit of touch up right here. So I hit enter. And I'm going to click off of it while I have one of the marquee buttons or the masking buttons uh, on. Hit the B button and then redraw that leg because bam. And that is another way to get our proportions right. But let's just uh, for time purposes. And just to make sure we get our uh, our practice in, let's just draw it by hand. But once again, there's so many different ways to do it. So bam, and we're just looking at her leg. And once again, it doesn't have to match up exactly. It just has to. It just has to feel right. 
bam, and we got that little leg right there. Now, just to do what we did on the other leg, or at least the other drawing right before this, or the, the, the next frame, darken that so you can see that right there. And then I'm going to curve the body, because at this point, we're, we're kind of at this stage where her arm is kind of like right around here. She's twisting her body so she can get that nice torque action and it's going to call come right around. So we kind of twist our, our whole entire body when we, uh, when we do a nice little kick, especially when it's a one legged kick, which most kicks are usually one leg is off the ground. So we need something to stabilize it. It's a little bit different if you do the the, the quapueta kick where you see the character or you see the person or whoever we're animating is uh, has three points of contact on the ground. Whereas one leg's up and an uh, arm is on the floor or something else to stabilize that momentum. And that's a little bit advanced, but don't worry, we could probably get to that uh, if you're still interested in... And, uh, you know, making the animations and whatnot. So, bam. And I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup work. I put a hit in the E tool. And there we go. So, we have her revving up. She's just geared for that kick. Look at that. Bam. She's coming in hot. And now I'm going to make another frame. Turn that opacity down. And then I'm going to go to this guy. So, it could be in between or keyframe. I'm just going to just put K for a keyframe just for now. And now I'm going to do the motion where she is has contact on the ground. So her leg, I mean her foot, makes contact. And then it starts to get to this point where her leg is starting to kind of bend. Not really. It's just a, it becomes like a straight pole going all the way up. Draw the thigh, draw the motion of her leg coming in, and I'm getting a little bit of delay on my computer, but just I'm going to fight through it. So I'm going to have her torso like that, and kind of have, and this is how her waist and her body is twisting, and this is where her, 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 um, Man, uh, this is where her upper torso is turning as well. So this is that little windup that we had in the beginning. So bam, see how this is shooting this way and this is shooting that way. Go looking like it's two opposite ends and it's kind of twisting. This is where it unwinds. So just like a, a, a wound up propeller, like or there's old cars where you pull it back and then it winds up. And then when you release it, it goes shoots forward like like a real car or a machine. It's pretty much that essence right there. All humans are just basic machines. We have basic machine-like features. And bam. But, you know, this is not the Matrix or this is not a... Uh, what's another word? This, this is not a video game world that we live in. We live in the real world. But bam. So we got that little motion going in. And so I'm going to go back to our reference right here. So see this guy right here? We don't need to fill this in because of the major fact that we already did. And we did it by adding the kick. So instead of leaping forward, our character stops, kind of takes a pause, lets that unwind, and then unleashes that ultimate kick. But. Uh, wait, wait, nope, the wrong button. Well, not really wrong button, just a little mistake on that end. And bam, put that back. And let's get back to our kick button. Kick ball right over here. So, bam, we got that little frame. And since, once again, it's in between, let's just make sure all these are all lined up. So when we go up and down it, it just, it's just easy as pie. Just easy as pie. All right, so I'm going to unclick on all of that. Chip, chip, and cherry all. Wait, what? What happened here? Okay. I don't understand, but apparently it still is doing that. That's 
That could be just a default for for the correct version. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, so bam. Add a new frame. Take this off and add her right there. And then we're gonna have her come in with her massive kick and let the ball experience that power that she holds. So come back over here. I'm gonna add, so I'm gonna do another new frame. And this time I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna turn on opacity on this guy. Come back over here. And just so get another little quick little ref. So see, we're at this stage right now. We're going back to this stage right here. So this leg that's up in the air, that's good, that in our version is kicking. We're going to have that on the ground where it is just stretching out towards that ball or heading towards her destination. It's going to stretch outwards and away from her body so she can get that momentum going and see how it is right here, this leg that we land on is going to be up in the air. So it's ready to just spring into action. I'm going to grab the mouse so I can just click on that little button right there. And bring us back to this wonderful, wonderful kicking girl. And bam, so I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to have her on the ground. Now we want the foot on right around here. And... To help you out with this, I personally, you could do the, the method that I showed you just earlier, where we take that race and we could have this guy on the ground. So we just mimic this guy. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about the motion. So, whoops. And I'm just gonna round it just so I know where my turning point is. So I got my little leg. I'm gonna pull it all the way over here. I'm going to hit Control T, which is our transform tool, which lets us scale, size, and rotate it around. And I'm just going to get it on the ground. So, bam, and I kind of want it at its max, its apex, and that's that's right there. So I'm going to follow this path. So I'm going to take her leg, match it up with that one. And I kind of want a nice little arc, just to show distance just to show just a little bit of distance. And remember, all animation is, is how we place things right after each other. So it's all about spacing and it gives off the illusion of a moving realistic object. So now I'm gonna fix up this leg that is not the best leg on the planet right now, but we're gonna fix that up. Once again, we could to do that technique again where we just trace over it, trace over it, all right, we can do it all in one motion. We don't have to. Oh, whoops. Okay, I'm gonna have to push enter. I almost push escape. Escape would have caused my program to shut down on me. So that was the L2. Lasso it. Hit the V button. Bring it over here. Where it's gonna be stretched out just a little bit. I'm gonna hit the Control T. Get this little guy right here, and I'm gonna take this little anchor point. So I'm gonna click on this and drag it all the way up into the middle. I got a little, this little circle that I made, this imaginary circle. And I'm just gonna bring this up to its apex. Push enter, and we got that there. I'm gonna hit the L tool again, get away from this little mask area that we previously got on, and then draw a new one right there. And then we're gonna take this little bad boy right here, and then bam, just, just anchor it down to this point right here. And we're just gonna come outside. Make sure these little guys are coming on. So see these little two arrows that's connected that makes this little arch? Like a weird little U or an L that just doesn't make sense. There we go. That's more of an uh, of the L shape. So it's making that little weird L shape. And we're just gonna take that and bam. And make sure that's on. And then we're just gonna, yeah, bring that back. <coughs> yeah. Whew. All right, so. <clears throat> Bam, and then last but not least, this guy right here, control T, drag this little point, and then have it kind of slanted. You could break the leg, don't worry about breaking the leg. And 
this when we get this in there we can do a little bit of a touch up and this is how a lot of uh simple video games are made a lot of simple five video games sprites and or like mario or 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 uh I, uh, I don't remember all of the old ones, but a lot of the old ones that's not 3D, they do this kind of technique where they make these guys just like this. So, bam. And I'm just going to color that so we know that this leg is the furthest one away. And see how it kind of already matches up. Once again, just for practice purposes, if you have been practicing as much, I highly recommend you doing it the old-fashioned way where we, bam, add the lines ourselves reason being it's it just builds up a better <clears throat> better rapport real quick so i'm going to draw that torso and i'm going to have it right before she turns to that so right as we get here her this is going to be her arm that is closest to us this is her waist right here. So to show you where her waist is, bam. So this is the waist. This is where the torso starts and her arm should be going back. So uh, the arm that's furthest away from us and I'm gonna even darken it just to make sure that it uniformly matches uh, the leg over there. I was not paying attention towards that. I should have done that beforehand. And I'm gonna have her eye on the ball so she's She's just looking down at the ball. She knows her goal. She knows what she's going for. So I'm going to put click on this little layer right here. I don't know why I clicked on L. Click on the K. Just to make sure I understand it's a keyframe. I'm going to drag this back down here. Because it appears right before this guy right here. And now uh, I'm going to take this guy. Close off the other person. It should click off this any second now um huh what's going on here why why did it freeze i think my computer froze okay let's try that again no nope, it froze what's going on here what's going on here guy what is going on here all right i'm gonna click play maybe that can revive it Nope, it froze it even more. Huh. What's going on here? Yeah, I think my computer is overloaded. Let me save and I think that should solve the problem. And you know what? Let me also, just to be on the safe side, I'm pretty sure I locked in everything I was doing beforehand anyway especially with that save. So I'm gonna come down here to, let's see, where is it again? Automated print, open recent image, calculate trim layer. Where is history? I'm looking for history. Uh, let's see, show other image, edit. I know it's from around here, let's see, preferences. See menus, keyboard, purge, purge history. There we go. Purge histories. This cannot be undone. I'm sure. Undo that. Maybe that will save some energy and some memory. So I'm going to hit play. Nothing after that. So it really probably is just super overloaded right now. So once again, I'm double checking to make sure that star is there. And I'm going to click off of it real quick. So bam and the project is closed i'm gonna click file open recent and it should be right up here kickball usually it's at the very top but i think it's because the program is kind of wigging out right now so there we go i'm back and let me double check if i could click on the other on other guys real quick it's registering but it's i think it may just be completely overloaded and doesn't want to do its work right now. All right, so once again, I'm going to just save out. I'm going to start this video not over, but I'm going to have it pick up where we left off as soon as I fix this little problem. But you should not be having this problem. If you do, please let me know. Um, 
and I'll 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 find a way to to fix it. But I'm pretty sure this is just because the program that I'm recording on takes up a lot of information. So finally, clo it finally just clocked out. So give me a split second, and I'll be right back. Okay, in three, two, one, and bam. So I fixed the problem. Uh, Photoshop was just, uh, it was just had too many things open at once. So yeah, so I have to dumb it down. So I'm clicking the play button and as we see, looks a little slow right here. We're gonna slow down one little motion. So we're gonna add in one keyframe in, not keyframe, but in between, or we're gonna add a frame in between these two right here. But uh, just to give you a quick uh, little video on how that is playing. So I'm gonna bring that down and then bam, look at this guy right about any second now. Any second now, there we go. Bam, see she's rushing towards it. Bam, kicking it off into space like a G. Bam, gangsta. All right, so coming back over here, we're just gonna add that one little frame. So new frame, then we're gonna add a new layer as well. All right, and then hit that B button so we can draw, and then we're gonna put on some onion skin so we can see what's happening in between these characters. So bring down this opacity, and then bring down this opacity. And usually I'll probably ask you if we were in person, okay, what do you think should happen right here? But since I can't hear your response, I'm just gonna say, let's just go right in between the middle and Bam, so get her thigh right around there. So you want the thigh in between this one and the right one. So we look at the right leg right now, one in between. Next, we want that motion, and we can do a little bit of that uh, blur and smear, smear and or smear, however you wanna pronounce it. Once again, I kinda have my own definition, but we could do a little bit of a takeoff and just add those little extra, you know, Stress lines, not stress lines, uh, motion blur lines, action lines. A lot of people call it different things, but bam, a little blur, like she's just popping up. Her legs should be starting to stretch out now. So we can start stretching that out. And bam, it should be, it should have its own little kick to it. And at this point, her, her arm is kind of up in the air and it's not quite at that moment where but this is right where she's about to turn so this is right as she is turning her hand that way and I apologize uh, if I don't have the refs up so you can see it but it was uh it was causing some problems so we're gonna we're gonna go in blind I'm really blind but I know where I'm going it's just you don't see, get to see the final product until we are done that's kind of blind. So bam. And then we're gonna bring the arm back just a little bit and darken that a little bit as well. Now she has her nice kick going and just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna click the first frame, shift click the slash, turn it all off, click on frame two, turn these guys off and then add that one right there. And I'm gonna name it in between the eye. Let's go name it just the eye. And then we're gonna do a little test run just to make sure it comes in smooth and bam. Looks like a nice smooth kick coming in. And then we can start doing some fun things right afterwards, but I'm gonna do a little test run. So say for web and devices. On here it should still come up slow. Don't worry about it. So I'm gonna go back to the first frame, save, save over this guy, replace. Yes, I do, because we're not using it right now. And I'm gonna click on this and double check it by double click it. Give it a couple seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten there we go and bam and it's a little bit smoother compared to the last one i should have probably saved the last one so we could uh take a peep at that but as you can see just 
bam just all that power coming into it and just unleashing it like the beast that she is now let's give this little beast her her own little outfit so i'm thinking of some soccer gear so right now we got mimsy over here so we got our her whole entire folder and we got the balls whole entire folder all right and if any of these frames are off it's because we probably put something where or turn something on when we shouldn't have or uh, not really shouldn't, but it's probably on in the wrong spot. So let's just double, uh, just so we're all together now. We're going to do a little recap. So the ball, the last one right there is all going to be from nine. It's going to be the one at the top that we made a copy of. Number 10 is the original ball itself because it's off screen. We can't, we don't really need to see it. So I just left the ball as is and just showed like a little crack of it. So I just see it just off into the moon. So bam, and that's the one that I distorted. So you see, I made a different layer for that one. So I basically copied that layer and just tweaked it. And same thing over here, copied it and tweaked it, copied it and tweaked it. And then the rest of these are just the normal ball, just sitting there, just waiting for something to happen. That anticipation. So going back to the girl, we got keyframe at the top, in between, in between, keyframe on seven in between on I uh, on six and then we got a couple keyframes so for five four three keyframes the last in between that we just added right there and then number one is keyframe now since that is all good and gravy I am going to add take all of these and this is not going to affect the animation at all so I'm going to click at the top and then shift click all the way at the bottom of this one and add it into another folder and I'm going to type this in as girl so she's still Mimsy it's a folder within a folder it's like folder inception so just think about that just and I'm going to make a new layer in the Mimsy folder, not in the little girl folder, but in the Mimsy folder. And I'm going to take this and drag it over here. And I'm going to call this uh, clothing. Clothes, you could call it whatever you want. Dress, you can make whatever you want as well. So I'm just going to call it clothes for now. And then I'm going to switch up my blue to something different. I'm going to use green. You can use red, you can use any other color, as long as you could tell it's that color and it you can easily just pick it out over the character. So I'm gonna take my brush from a four to a two because I want smaller lines because this is where we're gonna get into some really nice little anesthetics right here. So I'm gonna come, to, so I'm at the first frame and this right here is all gonna correspond with all of the girls clothing right there. So she's coming in hot and I'm going to draw that. So I'm drawing the bottom of the pants, like the most baggiest area first. And then I'm going to just drape it over her. So I'm going to turn down. I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to shift click on all of the girl. And I'm just going to click on that girl folder and just bring down the opacity just a little bit so we can just. So she doesn't overpower that green too easily. I'm going to bring it down to probably like about a. Uh, let's go with 28. 28 seems nice and neat and I'm just going to go through all the animation and yep it's all there at that opacity. Now I'm just going to just like how we did with uh, our normal drawing class we're just going to build on top of it. So I'm going to add the, the little shorts that they wear for soccer. So first we're going to add that because that's where the most of the motion is coming from and this is what we like to call secondary motion because we got the primary motion, which is her body moving, her legs going up. And the secondary motion is the aftermath of that. So when your body moves, your clothing moves with you, or your jewelry moves with you, or your hair moves with you. And that's what we like to call secondary motion. So we got primary motion, which is what is moving, and the secondary motion is what is being moved. Perfect example of that is a flagpole in the wind with a flag on it. Uh, so the wind uh, is moving the flagpole around just a little bit 
you know, like the flag pole itself, the, the, the steel part of the pole could be moving left and right or jolting back and forth, however you can imagine it. But the flag itself is getting wicked up by not just the wind, but the motion of the pole itself. So it's going to be waving all over the place. But let's not focus on that now. So I'm going to click on a new frame or a new layer, come over here, and let's, let's make sure that we turn these off. So bam, turn that off, come over here to this. And I'm just going to pretend that we could turn it on so we could see it, but I highly recommend if you're going to do that, we could do the same thing that we did to the, to the little girl. We turned out that opacity. So just so I can make this a little bit clearer, I'm going to come back to this frame uh, not, and turn back on this layer. And I'm going to do exactly what we did with the other leg. So I'm going to darken that so we could really see the emphasis of the little girl's leg over there because it was kind of coming hard. In there. Actually, you know, I'm going to change the whole entire color, just make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to hit Control U, and what this does is brings us, it brings up this hue and saturation. This allows us to change the hue and saturation of any picture that we have in here. And, and I have preview clicked on, so it means when I start dragging some of these sliders back and forth, you're going to see some changes over here. So first, I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So bam, already change the color. I want to bring up the saturation just a little bit down, make it a little bit more dull. And I'm going to keep everything else. If I move this around, it's going to start changing the color as in, well, look, it is bam, and purple. So I'm going to actually change it to purple. It seems like it pops out way better than the green. Hit the OK. And now we got that. Now, but we don't have Juju. No, no, Juju. Go, go. That's right. All right. So I'm going to hit the Alt button to bring up our eyedropper. And I'm going to just pick out some of this color right here so I could just replicate this color. So bam. And then once again, I'm just going to come over here. But it doesn't change this guy over here. So this layer, it doesn't change this guy. So he's still green. What I'm going to do is just erase that because I just started on that. Bam. Just erase that little essence. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to turn on this guy. And I'm going to bring him down his opacity just past the 50 mark. That way it's not too staining of my eyes. So from here, I'm going to put down the waist. And since her leg is coming upward, so her leg was right over here, right in this little area. What's happening right here, this is moving forward. So this is kind of coming down like this. Now I'm making it very sharp, very, very... Uh, very not pleasant. Let's soften that up. So let's use less lines. So I'm just going to bam, come over here and just use these two lines to simplify it, just like a cartoon. And I'm just going to round it off over here, create that little bulge edge, that little lip that we have when we have things wrap around stuff. And I'm going to have it wrap around the sections of her legs where it starts to basically split. And then from here, this is still coming up just with a little bit of force. So bam and then come back here, and bam. Now I'm gonna round this little area right here, and then I'm gonna fill this in like I did with the other one. That way we can tell it apart in the future. So we're gonna keep doing this along the board. So I'm gonna come down over here, turn this guy off, turn this guy on, turn down the opacity, add a new layer. Then I'm gonna come in and then just start drawing as if the leg, this right here, the, the one that we uh, have it in onion skin as the overlay, or I mean opacity turned down. We're just going to bam, press up, and we're looking at this, the left leg right now. So that was the right leg. Now we're looking at the left leg. It's a little confusing. I can even turn this off. So there we can see it just a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to turn this guy back on. And as this is coming in, I want this guy to still feel the momentum of her coming up and bringing in that powerful, powerful kick. So, bam, we got the next one. And then we're going to come over to number four. And as you can see, we're starting to build up a nice little onion layer skins right here. So I'm just going to turn on number five, turn on number four, layer four, turn down the opacity on layer four, keep layer five the same opacity, draw that waistline, so our waistline, bam, and we should 
start to see a slight arch. And after we get these all in, we, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, but right now, don't worry about it. Now at this point, the clothes have caught up because this leg is, is frozen, right? It's, it's about to stop. It's, it's, it's slowing down completely. So just like a car, when the car stops suddenly, we kind of keep moving. And that's why we wear seatbelts to make sure that we don't keep going with the car. But it's a good thing to know with animation because secondary motion, it highly shows that as well. So when you run, your hair stops and you stop, you, your hair stops, but it doesn't stop immediately. Your hair kind of keeps going a little bit because it's lighter than, than you. Uh, you carry around your hair uh, all day. I'm pretty sure it should be uh, lighter than you. So because of that lightness, it's just going to keep going. And then it's going to, when it's, it pulls on your roots or once it's like, gets that little feeling from the head where it's like, oh, okay, I can't go any further because the head keeps me in place. I got to stop and then it's going to just swing back. So bam, we got that going. So one, two, three, okay. Kind of skipped a layer. So it's at five on this, but on frame, we're on frame four. So let that confuse you. And I'm going to click on frame five and we're going to start seeing our stuff build up. Don't worry about it. Click on layer five, bring down the opacity, add a new layer. Then we're going to start off with the waist again, get the second, uh, the right leg in. And this is still going, coming back. This is still following the leg. This is still causing that little drag right there. But this one right here, we can start having it come up just a little bit past that point. And it, once again, it doesn't have to be completely smooth at first because we just refine it. And once again, I'm going to add those little coloration or basically shade that in just so we can know that that is on the left leg. And as you can see, it's now of the, the, the backside of the, of the, of the shorts is about to touch the backside of the leg. When at first, when it was in motion, it was touching the, the front side of the shorts was basically hanging onto or hanging off and being pushed by the front side of the leg. So I'm gonna make this go down in opacity. Wait, nope, nope, this is the right layer. So I'm just gonna come over to layer six, I mean frame six, turn down layer six to 37, turn these off, and then I'm gonna add a new layer. So we got layer seven right now. And now I'm just gonna add that waist again. And now is when we can see a little bit of that other leg coming to a stop as it's starting to slow down a little bit on momentum. But right now it's still going almost full force. There's like a brief pause. And I wanna show that by having it flap up. So see how, the shorts really connect with the knee right here. So see this little knee area? We need that little circular motion. So like a little wrap around. I'm gonna over exaggerate it so we can really see it. And so see right there? That is what is happening to that. So that little shaded area, that's all the inside of the shorts. And you see the leg kind of sticking out. I know it's still the onion skin, but once we put it all together, it's gonna look beautiful. Don't worry about that too much right now. But right here, this is this is basically what we're talking about at this moment. So bam, you see how it wraps around and it kind of wraps around the leg just like that and just like that. Now over here, this is this is kind of gonna keep going, but not as far. So it's gonna do the hair, kind of do the we're here whip. Uh, whoops, messed up on some lines. So I erase that. Once again, erase is the E tool, B is the brush tool. And I'm going to have it barely just about to touch her leg, but out here it's going to get really baggy. Like it's just reaching for the stars, reaching for the stars. And cover that with some shade. Come over here to number seven. Turn off these guys, turn this guy down. And I'm going to add another layer. And I'm actually gonna turn this guy down just way, way lower than that because we're gonna go on top of it some more. So I really wanna see what I'm drawing. So I'm gonna come over here, bam. And at this point, it should be at its apex as the clothing. 
So bam and bam. So we should have two extremes. One where the clothing's coming one way and the one where the clothing's coming another way. So right leg, it should be going away from her to the left, at least the left that we see. And the right, I mean the left leg should be going all the way to the right that we can see. So bam, once again, it does not have to be perfect. When we do the test, it's gonna it's gonna look a maze. Mm. It's gonna look amazing. All right, so bam, I'm gonna make that just a little bit thicker, and bam. So add that, and bam. So coming over here, closing off these valves real quick. I'm I'm at this point. I'm leaving this guy on because I'm not turning him off because he's not. He's not bothering me yet right now. He's so far away that I don't even really see him. And we're going to go through each and every one and make sure all of these are turned off again. So come over here. I'm on 9, layer 9, frame 8. And now you see such a drastic drop, right? So her waist was up here. Now it's down here. And we're just going to mimic that drop. So bam. And now the clothing. So this is the right leg that I'm doing right here. I'm making it wrap slightly around it. And now this is where it's just completely picking up momentum. So we can do that little smear and or motion blur that I talked about earlier. But the one behind it is not really moving that much. But the wind from this guy is going to be causing him to do like a little ripple effect. But we don't have to really super focus on that right now. So bam. And then click on frame 9. Minimize, get off all of these, turn this guy down to like a good 30% around here. Click on a new frame, I mean new layer, and fix the waist, and bam. So this is where it's really just, okay, bam, just continue on that motion blur, even make it look bigger. And then we can even drag some of this clothing out just a little bit, just to show that it just went past that leg and then just to show that it's the right leg over here I'm gonna shade that guy in and then and to reinforce that motion blur I'm gonna hit the E tool I'm gonna drop this down to a small little brush and I'm just gonna just slowly brush away some of these guys and that's gonna give the impression like it's just cutting through the air and I'm gonna hit that B and I'm gonna just sharpen that up by just just dragging up. So I'm just going to curve up just a little bit, just like that. Next, which is last but not least, click on frame 10, minimize the like the distracting ones. Okay, so those were mainly my distracting ones. And since I'm on frame 10, I should be on layer 11. So I'm going to drop down the opacity on this guy to a point where I could barely see him and I can see the waist is now dressed even more drastic than it was before. Click on that new new layer, not new frame, new layer. Come over here and then bam. And we can finish off where the, the, the shorts is coming back to normal on the right side and the left side is gonna come back to normal. And, but it's gonna be curved just a little bit. So we get to see a little bit that's inside here and that's going to be cut off from the rest of her body at that point. So bam, that's all her. And I'm going to shade the inside of this. I'm going to stop at the leg, shade the inside of this, stop at the leg. And then I'm going to just grab that E tool, make it small, and then kind of just give it a little breathing room. And now we're gonna go through each and every one of these. And so I'm gonna shift click on, I mean, click on 10, shift click to one, click on all of these eyes. Just make sure they're all turned off. And actually, I'm gonna turn them all on because it didn't work the way I wanted to. So I'm gonna turn them back all on and then I'm gonna turn them all off again. That way it's just bam, uniformly across the board, no more clothes. So we should not see a single close on any one of these frames. All right, so going through it. I don't see no shorts, beautiful. All right, so bam, 
Oh, whoa, whoa, something happened. Something happened. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go to layer two, put those on. Layer three, put those on. Layer four, put that on. Frame four, layer five, put that on. So basically, the way mine is set up is if the frame is whatever the frame number is, I just go up by one on the layer number. So bam, seven, I'm looking for nine, I mean eight, eight, looking for nine, nine, I'm looking for 10, 10, I'm looking for 11. All right, now I'm gonna minimize that and let that play just one time. And we see the clothing moving with the girl. Whoa, look at that, bam, kicking it like a beast. Now I'm gonna come back to layer one and I'm gonna click shift click on layer 10. Click on the girl folder, not Mimsy, but the girls folder right here. That 28% opacity, bring it back up to 100. So bam, it should come in stronger. And bam, now we should see her kicking the ball with a little bit of flair from her shorts. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, I'm gonna save that, make sure it plays right, and I'm gonna come over here. You know what, let's call it three. I think we're at stage three. This is where we're gonna leave off for stage three. So, bam. And then, since it's save, open this folder up, and let's, let's take a peep at this guy right here. And it's full motion. So, once again, it's not gonna be the uh, the most cleanest most uh cartoon animated look but it now it has that feel of just pure pure uh unbridled soccer potential from a soccer player but look at that right there uh bam she's kicking it straight to the moon Sh bing bang boom all right so i'm gonna leave it off right here i'm gonna send you guys the link uh mm -hmm. you guys should see this so you know you're gonna hear this in the video and if you have any questions whatsoever do not be afraid to reach out to me uh via text email and or uh, uh drop a comment on the video i may not see it in time because i'm not sure how unlisted and or private videos uh officially work on the comment section but uh yeah well, i mean you guys got my number so just text me if you need anything else all right stay up enjoy your spring break and i'll probably see you on friday and if not we could do another one